current events, Bible prophecy, the ancient past. How does it all fit together? Find out now. This is Pictures of the End. Hello, my name is Tim Rumsey, and you are listening to Pictures of the End. Thank you for joining us today. You can find us online at www.picturesoftheend.com. You can also call us toll-free at 855-447-8788. That's 855-447-8788 or 855-HIS-TRUTH. And we will be happy to talk with you, have a word of prayer with you, and also to share our special offer for today. Joining me today here in the studio is Dr. Philip Simon. He is a professor of theology and an author of uh, nine books. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Uh, we have, I look forward to uh, our study that we're going to be looking at today. Um, one of your more recent books is titled Dare to be a Daniel. Now, there have been many books written um, about the book of Daniel and especially the prophecies of Daniel. You take a little different uh, approach in your book. What makes this different? Because I really believe in a way Daniel was kind of unique because the book of Dan describes him as having an excellent spirit and also no fault was found in him. I'm sure there are faults in the life of Daniel, but nothing was mentioned. And also because in the last days we need to emulate the character of Daniel and to be prepared for Christ's coming. That's why this subheading of the book says empowering the final remnant to really encourage us and enable us to follow his example in following Christ and becoming more like Christ. And the great promise that God gives is that every person can have that experience. Every person can have that experience if we avail ourselves to what God wants to do in us and through us. Uh, let's just uh, start for a moment. Who was Daniel and where was he living and what makes that important to understand? Now, Daniel was a young man who lived in Judea and he came from the royal line. And that's why King Nebuchadnezzar wanted to choose the best young people to train, to serve in his kingdom. And so he chose then his friends and trained them so they could be his advisors. And um, so Daniel came from a very wonderful line uh, from the children of Judah. And he was just the right candidate for Nebuchadnezzar to choose him. Okay, so he was a captive. A captive. But one that was greatly honored. Yes. given lots of uh, possibilities that most didn't have. Yes, the best education ever, being trained in the palace, and given the best treatment possible. Okay. Well, we're going to focus today on Daniel chapter 3. Um, many of our listeners here know this story. We learn it if we go to church as children. It's one of those stories all the children learn. It's the fiery furnace. That's true. And um, let's just summarize very briefly the story. And then we'll dive into the application and some lessons for us. Well, you know, Daniel's friends face this big test. Their life was on the line. And the choice they had was to stand up for the truth or to succumb to the seductive invitation of their king, the benefactor who did so many things for them, uh, either to decide for him, to decide for God. That was the real issue. I call this uh, uh, worship wars. The whole issue was about worship. Do we worship the true God or do we worship the King Nebuchadnezzar? Yeah, it's interesting because there are some very fascinating parallels between Daniel chapter 3 and the book of Revelation. Yes. In Daniel chapter 3, as you've said, Nebuchadnezzar sets up this uh, giant statue made all uh, of gold. All of gold which was a perversion of a dream that God had given him some time before. Because he was threatened by the stone cut without hand, representing Jesus' kingdom, to be to be everlasting kingdom. So he decided that he really wanted the whole statue to be made out of gold so he would have permanent rule through himself and his, his uh, generation. So he wasn't just making it of gold because he had an excess of gold in his empire. He was making a statement. To make a statement, this kingdom will last forever, okay. my kingdom of gold. And there'll be no other kingdom coming after that. Wow. Now, there's, then he gathers all the people or the important people in the kingdom, and there's a command to bow down and worship the image. Mm -hmm. And if they didn't, what will happen? They'll be thrown in the fiery furnace. Wow. So 
Not just any kind of death. Yeah, they, 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 they sure demise. Uh, w- w- to actually frighten people. Uh, and, uh, and so there was this challenge of these faithful Hebrew friends to say, do you, do you become loyal to the king who educated, gave you a wonderful job, did so many wonderful things to you? Wouldn't you want to be thankful just to bow down to show him honor and gratitude? Hmm. Now, we're going to look at the character of Daniel's three friends, what enables them to stand faithful to God through this. But just for a moment, I'm going to jump to Revelation chapter 13 and just point out a couple of very fascinating parallels to explain why we're studying this story. I mean, this happened thousands of years ago. That's right. Why does it matter for us today? Yes. So in Revelation 13, verse 15, it's talking here about two beasts that work together at the end of time. These are powers. We're not going to identify them today. We don't have time. But here's what happens. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So here's an image, both in Daniel's time and at the end of time. There's a command to worship. And there's the threat of of death if you don't. Capital punishment. Uh, Both situations, if you don't worship the image, in both places, the end of Revelation, the the punishment was going to be death. Mm -hmm. And there's even a similarity in the uh, dimensions of the image. Mm -hmm. In uh, Daniel, the image is 60 cubits tall, 6 cubits wide. Yes. Um, And... In Revelation 13, that chapter ends with this reference to 666 in connection with amazing? this mark of the beast. So what is God trying to communicate to us then through Daniel's story here in Daniel well, chapter 3? Through Daniel's three? story, he was telling us way ahead of time. It's like a precursor, preparing us for the ultimate fulfillment in the beast and the image of the beast in Revelation 13, uh, w- which tells us God is consistent. What he tells us in the past continues to our times to remind us again this will be the ultimate test of his people. Would they be loyal to him no matter what? Or would they succumb to the seductions uh, that the world offers? And again, your chapter in your book, Dare to be a Daniel, that deals with this story you've titled Worship Wars. Yes. So what's the deal with worship? Well, you know, worship is the ultimate thing Satan wants. Uh, when, when, when he was a rebel in heaven, he wanted to be worshipped. And that's what he craves from the very beginning to the very end. Worship me. And that's why even with Jesus, his creator, he said, if you just bow down and worship me. The same problem with Nebuchadnezzar, bow down and worship me. Because that's Satan's impulse to be worshipped instead of God being worshipped. And it's an amazing thing that a creature wants to be worshipped. And not only that, he wanted the Creator to worship him, the creature. Hmm. So the devil never changes in his uh, desires and his tactics. Hmm. Well, his tactics change a little bit, but yes. the goal is always it the always same. comes back at an opportune time. He designs his temptation to fit the circumstances. Mm-hmm. So... Again, just to make clear, the reason we're studying here this story that happened so long ago, yeah, it's a fascinating story, but there are lessons that God wants us to learn Mm -hmm. about how to stand in faith, Mm -hmm. what it means to be faithful to him, Mm -hmm. especially in our time. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we have to be intentional. We have to be prepared. That's why you hear in the story that Daniel, to begin with, and his friends were determined to be faithful to God, not to defile themselves. It was an an impulsive decision on their part. You know, wait to see how we feel. No, no. The decision was already made. We have decided to serve God under any circumstance. So when the temptation was presented to three friends, by the way, with very seductive music to affect their emotions, they didn't have to debate that or argue about it. That's why they answered the king. You know, O king, that we serve God. We don't have to discuss this with you. It's already decided. And I think the lesson for us today, that we don't just wait for the temptation to come and then play it by ear, so to speak. But we all decided to serve God and be faithful to him. 
Yeah, back in Daniel chapter 1, it says that Daniel had purposed. Purposed. In his heart. What what does that mean? Well, purposed in his heart, meaning he already decided if such temptations come his way, he's, he was determined. Purpose in his heart, he meant business. He was intentional to serve God. So he didn't have to uh, waste time to think about it and debate it in his mind. It was already decided. I shall serve God under any circumstance. Now, you mentioned something just a minute ago about the way that this um, test came to Daniel's three friends. Mm-hmm. There was music. Music. Um, all kinds of music. All kinds of music. To, you know, music can be very seductive. People can do anything when they're affected by music. Yeah. You know, a lot of people say, hey, it doesn't matter what I listen to, what I watch, what I allow into my mind. It doesn't affect me. Maybe other people, but it doesn't affect me. That's and, what people say. But, you know, the Bible says, by beholding, we become changed. That's right. If we behold worldly music, we become worldly people. And music especially, uh, we know now from scientific studies, music directly bypasses part of the frontal lobe and goes straight to the emotional centers Mm -hmm. of the mind. That's why people do unusual things when they listen to certain kinds of music. Godly music or worldly music. Godly music can transform you to become more Christ-like. Worldly music can transform you to be like the world. It's a very powerful instrument in God's hand and Satan's hand. Now, what I find interesting is uh, Nebuchadnezzar uses sound, but there's also visual thing. I mean, there's this gigantic gold statue, Mm -hmm. and it's probably shining in the sunlight. Shining, glistening. Uh, So it's really a sound and light show, Mm -hmm. in a sense, Mm -hmm. that it's... uh, it's coming through the senses. Isn't yes. that how the devil's temptations usually come to us? Exactly. That's why we need to be anchored in Jesus. And from that position of strength in Jesus, we can act like Jesus. Mm-hmm. Now, just to uh, track through our story a little bit, we're coming up against a break pretty soon here, but uh, everybody falls down Everybody to worship this image when the music starts, except for... Except for Daniel's three friends. That's right. They could have been politically correct and say, you know, everybody is coming down. Let's just go along. Tie, I mean, tie my sandal again. Or yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And nobody would notice. Especially when somebody's life on the line and there's this fiery furnace that would incinerate them. You would think they would say, well, it's just a little thing. We, we don't mean to worship the image. It's just to seem... We are cooperating with the king who who was so nice to us and so helpful to us. So we see that Daniel... Now, we don't know where Daniel was. I mean, the Bible doesn't we tell us. No. Uh, he obviously Maybe he wasn't was on a mission or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, but his three friends had obviously made that same decision that Daniel did yes. sometime before. Yes. They had purposed yes. in their heart as well. Yes. So we're going to find out where that leads them. Uh, when we come back from the break here. But things get hot, don't they? They get very, extremely hot. <laughs> but uh, if, if you know the end of the story here, what an incredible miracle takes place. Yes, they show tremendous grace under fire. Because they are willing to stand. Willing to stand and be anchored in Jesus. So when we come back from the break, we're going to take a look at what kind of faith they had and how we can have that yes. same thing. Yes. Okay. Very good. This is Pictures of the End. We will be back after this break, but right now we want to let you know about our special offer today. We'll be right back. Thank you for listening. This is Pictures of the End. Do you want to learn more about the life and prophecies of Daniel? Now you can. Get your copy of Dare to be a Daniel, the inspiring and eye-opening book by Dr. Philip Simon. Use offer code DANIEL to get 20% off and free shipping. Order online at pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788. Is your life so busy you don't seem to have time to read the Bible? Do you want to understand God's Word better but don't know where to start? Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, a daily 15-minute Bible study podcast delivered directly to your phone, tablet, or computer. Join Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar as they uncover the Bible's message for you today. Learn more and sign up today at pathwaytoparadise.org.
Welcome back. This is Pictures of the End, and I'm here with Dr. Philip Simon, author of the book Dare to Be a Daniel. And we are looking at uh, the story in Daniel chapter 3 about the fiery furnace and Daniel's three friends. And uh, as we come back from the break here, we're going to really focus in on uh, the character of these three young men, these three Hebrew captives, and what kind of faith they had. Now, in your book, Dr. Simon, you refer to their faith as an if-not faith. What do you mean by kind that Kind of phrase? unusual term, but it's taken from the narrative. Because when he said, if you don't fall and worship the image, who is the God who's going to save you out of my hand? It was really a challenge to God. And what response did they give him? I'll just, I'll just read here from yeah, Daniel 3. It. Yes. This is verses 17 and 18. If it be so... Well, let me back up. Verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So this will regard this expression, the if not faith. Because there is if yes faith. If yes faith means whatever I ask God to do for me, he does. He saves me, he blesses me, and that's the easy kind of faith. But the challenging kind of faith we need for the last days is the if not faith. And and this if not faith was exhibited in the example of the three friends and Job and Jesus. Hmm. The three friends said, we know he can say, but even if he doesn't, we will still trust him anyway. And Job said, though he slay me, yet I will trust him. And Jesus said, take this cup away from me, but it's not my will, but you will be done. That's the kind of faith we need for the last days. And in all these examples you just mentioned, none of them could see visibly mm-hmm. or in other ways um, what the outcome was going to be before it happened. Exactly. The outcome was totally at the disposal of their faith, knowing no matter what happens, God was a good God. And we trust Him completely, and we avail ourselves whatever He wants to do, because we know that's for the best, even if it required martyrdom. Faith is the evidence of things not seen, right? Absolutely, yes. Um, I mean, the faith of Abraham was like that, by the way. hmm. He could not see the end Yet he was willing to obey God, regardless, even if his son Isaac was to be sacrificed. This is the kind of faith Jesus exhibited now this, in his father. This raises a question in my mind, and maybe some of our listeners as well. Is it really truly biblical faith then, or am I exercising biblical true faith if I just believe that God is going to answer yes to everything that I ask? I don't think it's biblical faith. I think faith has to be tested. And and the times will come when we will not simply say, I pray that God would save me from this trial and and know that's God's will. No, God might want us to go through a trial to refine our faith. But we never go through any trial without Jesus being with us. We face a storm, but Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Peace, and he is there with us. And if he doesn't remove the storm, at least we face it with him. Which is exactly what we find happening in this story. Mm -hmm. So the three Hebrew friends were not sure they were going to be saved by a furnace. Why? Because they said, but even if he doesn't, which means in their minds, God in his wisdom could have chosen to let them sacrifice their lives for the cause. You know, what's amazing to me is that staring uh, almost certain death in the face, feeling the heat probably from this furnace, um, they make a very conscious decision mm-hmm. that they would rather die than dishonor God. Absolutely. And that's pretty incredible. It is because they, 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 uh, they experience God's presence in their lives. They train themselves to be loyal every step they were growing and knowing God, and when the test came, they're ready for it. To say, we know God loves us, God believes in us, God 
will will be manifest in our lives. So whatever he decides to do, he's a good God. He's always good. Whatever he does is for the best. Okay. And when you have this kind of trust, then you can go through a trial. So how do I get to know God that way? How can I build that kind of faith? The only way, the only way to do that is to walk with Jesus like Job did. As we walk with him, he transforms us to be more like him. He sanctifies us. It's a gradual process. Uh, There is no other way. Uh, It's not something presumed, assumed. We really need to walk with Jesus. As we walk with Jesus, he transforms our character, and he builds our faith. You know, uh, Tim, I don't think much about my weak faith. I think about the mighty faith of Jesus. What I do every day, I submit my weak faith to Jesus to connect it with his big faith. And my faith grows gradually. So it's intentional effort every day to grow more and more to be Christ-like as we walk with him. And wouldn't you say that God gives us uh, experiences and opportunities every single day where we can exercise that faith muscle and it can become a little stronger. It's, it's, the trick is recognizing mm-hmm. and then choosing even Every what, day what seems that. to be little things sometimes. Absolutely. Every day we have many chances to build up our faith in Jesus. If we see the opportunity, and also if we don't shy away from it, many people when they face with a challenge, they, they run away from Jesus, you see, instead of drawing close to Jesus. Because we don't want to face trials Temptations without Jesus being with us. He's our help, he's our mentor, he's our enabler. Now, we have a few minutes here, and I'd like to dip back to Daniel chapter 1, because mm-hmm. Daniel and these same three friends make a decision mm-hmm. in Daniel 1 mm-hmm. that uh, when they made that first decision in the first chapter, it may, I mean, they, they could have been, we could have justified them for yes. not making this decision. And of that course. is, they were not going to eat uh, food and wine that was provided by the king. They were going to follow God's health laws. Remember the saying, if you're in Rome, do what the Romans do? Mm-hmm. They could have said, if you're in Babylon, do what the Babylonians do. Because remember, they're away from their culture, away from their surroundings. And many people, when they go to a foreign country, they, they easily can succumb to the culture. And he was so nice to them. He treated them royally. You know, in his palace, offering the best food, the best education, never had to have a resume to apply for a job. They already got a job before they graduated. So it would have been easy for them to say, out of respect for this king. But they had a greater relationship with the king of heaven, and they had greater respect for him. And that's why it says they purposed, how they purpose In the heart, and the expression in the heart means they are sincere and genuine, authentic, so they make a decision to uh, remain faithful to the instructions God has given them concerning uh, you know, something dealing with health, uh, and there were some deeper ramifications. But they make a decision here. How does that help prepare them now to remain faithful in Daniel chapter 3 with the fiery furnace? Oh, because they practice their faith. Faith does not grow unless it's practiced, uh, not only in this one thing or the big thing or the small thing. But every chance we have to stretch our faith, to prepare us for things to come. This is what I call it. I call it they, they had a deposit of faith, a reservoir of faith to draw from in times of need. That's why we deposit money at our bank. So in case we need in times uh, when we get sick, whatever, we have a reservoir. Many people don't have a reservoir. And if they don't have a reservoir of faith, they're faced with a, with a challenge and they succumb to They had a reservoir of faith ready to come in handy when they needed it. So uh, we'll leave this thought here and move forward because we've got just a couple minutes left. But God gives each one of us then experiences or opportunities each day to start building or depositing into this reservoir of faith. Exactly. Even though we start with little deposit, you know, like uh, a mustard seed of faith. That's okay, as long as we unite our mustard seed of faith in Jesus' big faith, always connected with Jesus, a bigger source than ourselves. Now, at the end of the story, Nebuchadnezzar looks into the fire, and he says, I don't see three men, I see four. 
and the fourth one looks like the Son of God. Mm-hmm. How did this pagan king recognize God? He'd never seen him before with his eyes. Well, any any young people like Dan, his friends, who was in such love with Jesus and were Christ-like, anchored in Jesus, witness for their faith. It, it, it's just a part of the package. If you know God and love him, you want to tell people. I believe they told King Nebuchadnezzar a lot about Jesus. And in a way, he was familiar with his character. And when he appeared among the three in the fire furnace, he could recognize from the way he looked and acted, his demeanor, the way he walked, the way he talked to them. That must be the Son of God they've been talking to me about. So it's it's really the character. Character. Is what's behind this whole uh, story here, what God is trying to communicate. Exactly. The character of Jesus manifested in the lives of these three friends of Daniel. Hmm. Which means, then, that it is possible for ordinary people to walk with Jesus long enough and in faith, as that faith builds, that Christ's character can actually start being reflected in people. Absolutely, and I really believe Kiki Nebuchadnezzar, when he, when he recognized the Son of Man, they resembled Jesus' character. They were walking together, and he saw them as a group. Didn't I send there three? There's a fourth one. As if he associated them together, as if these three friends resembled this fourth man. Colossians one twenty seven says, Christ in you mm-hmm. is the hope of glory. Exactly. So Christ, he is God in you, human beings. You see the correspondence here. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So his glory, which means his character, is revealed through his followers. That's really an incredible promise. It is. It's very powerful. <laughs> and um, God promises that he can do this in every person. We don't have to have certain qualifications, right, in order to... We all (laughs) qualify if we simply open our hearts to God and say, I avail myself whatever you want to do through me. Wonderful. Amazing. Well, there's so much more that I wish we had time to look at, but we are out of time here. If you'd like to learn more and read more about Daniel's character, you can get a copy of Dare to Be a Daniel on our website at um, picturestheend.com. Dr. Saman, thank you so much for being with us Thank you. I really enjoyed it. We will be back next time with Pictures of the End. You have been listening to Pictures of the End, a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. Pictures of the End is available via your favorite podcast service and also at www.picturesoftheend.com.